the question is, uh, my fiancé is from Morocco. Uh, he follows Maliki fiqh. Uh, do Malikis fold their hands over the chest during Salat? I have seen my fiancé pray with his hands at his side. Which way is the Maliki fiqh? Uh, where I can get the books on Maliki fiqh and the difference between schools of thought? Um, so it's correct uh, that Malikis uh, pray with their hands uh, on the side. Okay, so that, that is correct. So again, um, as I mentioned, I follow the Shafi fiqh. Uh, and uh, yes, there will be differences in, in the way uh, some other people might, might pray. It's important that we don't criticize people who pray differently. It is an acceptable position uh, to pray with the hands um, at the sides. Uh, this is the way that is uh, conducted in, in, in the Maliki fiqh. Um, where can you get books on Maliki Fiqh? Um, um, what I would refer you to is, um, I'm not sure exactly which part of the country the person is from, uh, but um, well, we do have the Hikma Bookstore, um, and um, the Hikma Bookstore uh, has a range of books. I don't know specifically whether they have books on um, Maliki School, uh, but if somebody sends the, uh, we can follow up um, on the email that, that's come in. Um, and we will provide some, some input on, on, on books. Okay, the other comment, I think Brother Sagir has made this comment, yeah? Uh, uh, there is a book, uh, Fikhu Sunna, okay? F-I-Q-H-U-S-U-N-N-A-H. Okay, this is a book that contains the various schools of thought and gives you the uh, opinions from the different schools of for thought uh, schools of fiqh, sorry, uh, as to how the variations are in, in terms of how to, how to pray, whether you, you put the hands on the side, uh, which are the supplications that, that are, are, are said, uh, and you, whether the, to raise the hands against the ears before going into ruku. Uh, some of these differences are, are um, uh, described in, in detail within this, this book. Uh, the book is called Fiqh Sunnah. So just to repeat what um, Brother Sagir said, um, Mention uh, this book, Fikr Sunnah, uh, is one of it's probably the most comprehensive book in terms of describing uh, the different uh, positions from the, the ulama uh, on um, uh, fiqh issues, and it goes through how certain positions were arrived at uh, in terms of the the jurisprudence in the in the, the schools of fiqh, uh, and uh, it's a very comprehensive book. Uh, any any other questions? Yes, sister. Yeah, so the question is, are there particular surahs of the Qur'an that are better to recite uh, in uh, certain prayers um, compared to others? Uh, the answer is yes. Um, well, firstly, the answer is yes. There are certain surahs that uh, it is better to recite in, in, in certain prayers uh, compared to others. Uh, but it is not wrong to, to recite a certain prayer here and a, a certain um, surah here or a certain surah there. You can recite any surah of the Qur'an uh, in, in, in any prayer or any section of the Quran. Uh, there is nothing wrong in terms of what you can recite. Um, some of the examples are, for example, in the Witter prayer. Okay, the, the last rakat of, of the Witter prayer, uh, it is good to recite uh, Surah Ikhlas. That's Kul Hu Allahu Had Allahu Samad. It is good to recite that. Uh, it is good to recite in the Maghrib prayer uh, short surahs. Okay, so the Maghrib prayer, it is good to recite short surahs. Um, for the Fajr prayer and Isha prayer, it is good to recite long surahs. Okay? Uh, and like that, there are, and the Prophet ﷺ is known that there were certain favorite surahs he had uh, that he would recite in, 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 in certain prayers. Um, and we, that in itself can be studied. So just to um, repeat what Brother Sagi said, uh, he was emphasizing the importance of um, not hurrying the sujood, the, the, the prostration when we put our head on, on the floor. Uh, this is the time when the servant uh, is closest uh, to, to his Lord. Uh, and we should not um, go quickly into the sajda and, and straight up again like a bird pecks uh, um, a grain of rice from the from the floor. Instead, we need to take our time um, during the the sajda, 
Uh, and this is a time where we should ask of Allah abundantly. So what I mentioned was, um, sub- what we say there is Subhana Rabbil Allah. But we can uh, extend the supplications and one should try to extend the supplications, particularly during the, um, the sajda. And there are many other uh, duas and, and supplications that, that, that one can say uh, during this time. Uh, and one should feel during this time that they are the closest to Allah. This is the time during the prayer um, where one should really feel extremely close to Allah dur- during the sajda. When, when you conclude the dua, the question is, when you conclude the dua, should you uh, wipe uh, over the face? Uh, it is, uh, I mean, it's, uh, my understanding is yes. So you, you go like this, okay? Um, so that's how you conclude the, the dua. Um, the only time, I mean, one of the things in the Shafi school and, uh, is we, we do um, dua kanut. Uh, which is uh, in the in the morning prayer, uh, uh, in the Fajr prayer, uh, after the ruku, we, we raise the hands uh, like this, uh, and then there is a special supplication that is um, recited at, at that time. Um, after that supplication, uh, s- um, scholars have said you should not wipe the hands; you should go directly uh, into the uh, into the sajda. Uh, but generally, when the supplications after the prayer, for example, or any other time when you are praying, uh, yes. You. So the question is, um, what is the advice to somebody who is struggling to perform the prayers? Um, what advice should we give them? Um, so, as I mentioned in the hadith, it's important that uh, we love for our brothers and sisters what we love for ourselves. Okay, this is a very important uh, hadith that we we talked about earlier. Uh, and to try and implement this, um, we need to try and love for them that they love the prayer as much as we love the prayer. Okay, so if we love the prayer, we should also love for them that they also become uh, attached to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala through the prayer. So what advice can we give them? Firstly, we need to pray for them. Okay, we need to pray for them that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala uh, makes their prayer uh, more punctual, uh, more meaningful, uh, and full of humility uh, and, and they're performing it in a, in a timely way. So first thing we need to do, we need to pray for them. Um, but we need to give them advice. Uh, we need to, to try and counsel them. We need to um, give them the following pieces of advice. Firstly, the importance of the prayer, uh, I think, needs to be um, re-emphasized. Um, the prayer is the first thing that we will be asked about. Um, uh, when we will be asked about uh, what we have done in our life, Okay. We're not going to be asked about whether we were punctual in, in getting to work, uh, on whether we um, were, what our attendance was like at work, um, what we did in terms of our relationship with our neighbors and our family members. All of these things are important. But the very first thing we're going to be asked about, okay, uh, if our dean is correct, the first thing we'll be asked about was, were our prayers intact? This is the first thing we will be uh, held accountable for. So this is very serious. Okay, um, The prayer is something that is an obligation, and we need to emphasize to people that it is an obligation. Okay, If we perform the prayer, okay, there is immense reward for it. Okay, uh, If we are negligent in the prayer uh, and we don't perform that prayer, uh, there is a sin associated with it. Okay. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, um, with his infinite knowledge, okay, he knows what is good for us and what is harmful for us. Okay? He knows that it is good for us to pray. Okay? And this is why the rewards for prayer are so immense. Okay? There is a huge reward for the prayer. Okay? But there's also a sin associated with not praying. Okay? 